Wasik and Wasak. That's right. That's my name. Um, this is Victoria Ake again interviewing, and this is Columbus, Ohio, the 28th of August. Okay, we're at the person camp, and we're talking about the Red Cross parcels. The, uh, the Red Cross parcels were, were really uh, what sustained a lot of people, if not the calories they got from just the thought of getting a Red Cross parcel. I look forward to it, and uh, they were disappointed when, it, disappointed when they were not forthcoming, and of course elated when they got something more than uh, they expected. Uh, if you were healthy and stayed healthy, you lost weight slowly and you could stay you know, in pretty good shape. Uh, if you got sick, um, it was dangerous because no medical or very little medical attention and uh, the people that got uh, dysentery or something like that, they lost weight just uh, rapidly and became skin and bones in just a short while. Um, of all the people in the prison camp, the Russians were by far the, the worst shape. They were, uh, they looked like uh, something from another world. Their clothes were tatters. They're, a lot of them had no shoes. Uh, they were skin and bone, and they died uh, at the rate of several a week. They'd stack them up in a uh, little brick uh, house that was at the end of our uh, compound, and periodically bury five or six or ten at a time. Not many Americans or British or French died that I was aware of. I remember being like part of a, a funeral detachment for a British soldier once uh, in the three months that we were there. Uh, I don't, I was not aware of any great escape plans, although there was always talk about it. Uh, if you really wanted to have uh, to conduct a a realistic escape, I I was told that you have to get permission from um, the head ally in the prison camp, which he was called a man of confidence, mm -hmm. and uh, a couple times uh, once uh, Dick Simmons and I, Dick Simmons was in my squad. Uh, he was captured in Hurlesheim at a, but not the same place I was. We, we met uh, after we were across the river. And he was my bunkmate in, in the prison camp. Uh, we slept in uh, two, three, and sometimes four-tiered bunks that were about f five feet long and about three feet wide and about eight inches deep. So you couldn't uh, stretch out. You had the two, two GIs had to sleep spoon fashion. And when one turned over, then the other one had to turn over because there wasn't room for two of them to lay shoulder to shoulder. And uh, Dick and I, one time on a, I don't know what we were doing, around some kind of a assignment, uh, we were moving someplace near the front gate and we tried to hide behind a small building hoping that uh, we could get out the gate, but we got caught. Uh, <laughs> without even trying to get out of the gate, we got caught just hiding back. Fortunately, we were caught by one of the guards that were from our compound and he just chewed us out and didn't uh, report us. And towards the end, maybe a week or so before we were liberated, uh, the Germans were going to move the whole, cam the whole camp or at least the Americans out. 
and we were told to gather all our possessions and fall out. Well, uh, Dick Simmons and I again, uh, we crawled up in the overhead of the building, uh, the big barracks. Uh, the, the barracks had a ceiling, and the ceiling panels could be pushed up, and we went up and crawled into the ceiling and laid up against the edge where we couldn't uh, be seen. And of course the Germans would count, they would count us several times a day, but especially if they were going to move us. And as they counted, they came up short, so they started looking for the stragglers and underneath the buildings. And, and they found stragglers all over, because apparently everybody had the same idea. Uh, and not everybody, a number of people had the same idea not to be moved away from the approaching armies. Well, they kept the, they kept the uh, whole barracks standing out there all day long while they counted and recounted and looked and recounted. And then in the end, uh, after it was dark, they finally decided that they weren't going to move them after all, and they let them come back into the building. And, and we stayed there all night because we thought that they may change their mind again. And then next day we crawled back down and a week later we were liberated, so. Uh, Where did they take you after liberation? Well, uh, I don't know how they determined where we were going to go but because we, people from the same barracks went to different places, but in my case, at Dick Simmons and I both, uh, we went by truck from uh, the prison camp to an airfield uh, not too far from Hamburg. Uh, it was an airfield that was operated by the British, uh, camp being in the British section. And then they flew us to Brussels. Uh, they kept us in the British Army. We got showers and haircuts and delousing and food and we were in uh, British uniform. They gave us a whole issue of British uniform, beret, uh, the wool jackets that they had, uh, those heavy shoes. With and uh, we stayed in Belgium for, or in Brussels for uh, maybe a week like that. And then they turned us over to the Americans at Namur, Belgium. And then from uh, Namur, Belgium, after, again, a few days of getting uniforms and physicals and uh, whatever the Army had to do, uh, we boarded a uh, troop ship of all prisoners uh, and sailed to England to pick up wounded GIs. And we were in uh, Southampton, docked, waiting for the uh, wounded to be put aboard on May 8th, B Day. And uh, all the excitement, all of a sudden there was all this excitement, bells ringing, whistles blowing, and people dancing in the streets, and they wouldn't let us off the ship. They doubled and tripled the guard and wouldn't let anybody off the ship, and next morning we sailed for New York. How was it coming home and seeing your family again? Oh, that was great. What did your mom say was her first? Uh, I don't remember. I came home, uh, we came to uh, New York, Camp Kilmer, and then after several days there, uh, went to Camp Atterbury, uh, the regional camp in Indiana, and then from there, home, and uh, got a 60-day leave, which I didn't know the Army gave 60-day leaves. And I even got a 10-day extension on that, so I didn't report from uh, 
late May. I didn't report to the service till August 1st. And then I went to Miami Beach to a R and R facility where they the uh, army went all out to treat you well. They had very we used all the Miami Beach hotels and restaurants as part of the army facility and stayed there for a while and then eventually got discharged. What has been your experience with the Twelfth Armor Division Association after the war? Well, I uh, I lost track of uh, almost everybody, and uh, I didn't know there was an organization. And I retired from uh, my uh, work in uh, 1991, in, uh, July 1st, 1991, and. That year, the reunion was in Omaha, and uh, Ralph Spock, who was uh, in my squad, uh, in the States and up to England, he got sick and went to the hospital in England. But he was, he tried to find me, and he uh, was traveling from uh, Pennsylvania to Omaha and stopped in the Hammond area overnight, picked up the book and started looking for it. Found the name, and it turned out to be my mother's name, and her telephone number, and she gave him my telephone number. He called me up, and since then I've been in the organization. I've gone to every reunion since then. And the experience has been terrific. Uh, a couple years later, I was trying to find uh, some of my old friends, and one of them is Joe Newby, who I left on a battlefield on the way to Hurlishine. I uh, found the computer service that would uh, search for GIs, and they came up with his uh, uh, residence and telephone number happened to be 30 miles from where I live. And uh, I called him up, and next day we got together. The other, uh, the other fellow that was Dick Simmons, who was uh, in the prison camp with me, I found him in, uh, there it was a little bit more difficult because I ended up with 25 Richard Simmons scattered around the country, more common name. And I found him in uh, Houston, and uh, we talked uh, maybe an hour on the phone and talked about getting together. Unfortunately, he died a month later. I never did see him. Well, that's pretty much the end of the uh, 12th Armored Saga. <laughs> Michelle, do you have anything? Um, not right off. I'm sorry. That's okay. Well, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. My pleasure.